welcome dear students hope you are all the well and studying hard today in this video we will read a beautiful poem wind and it is written by subramania bharti originally the poem was written in tamil and afterwards it was translated in english by another famous poet ak ramanujan so here we will analyze the poem word by word explore the connotations the theme the central idea and also the poetic devices so be patient and watch till the end so let's start before going to the text directly we should know about the poets subramanya bharati 1882 year of birth and 1921 he died chinnasamy subramanya bharati also known as bharathayar was a tamil writer poet journalist Indian independence activist a uh, social reformer popularly known as Mohakabi Bharti he was a pioneer of modern tamil poetry and is considered one of the greatest tamil literary figures of all time so he is your poet now come to ak ramanujan he was not only a translator you know he was himself a great poet and uh, new, uh, numerous famous poems are there written by him so let us be acquainted with him also atipati krishna swami ramanujan popularly known as ak ramanujan was an indian poet and scholar of indian literature who wrote in both english and kannada ramanujan was a poet scholar professor a philologist folklorist translator and playwright now come to the poem uh, before going to the text directly let us know something about the title it is a very simple title you know and it is a one word title wind but there are two levels of meaning here one is literal meaning the surface meaning and another is figurative meaning means the deeper meaning literally you all know wind wind is a natural phenomenon and it means air or bridge but there is a figurative meaning also wind here in this poem afterward we will discuss uh, elaborately while going to the text it means problems challenges hardships obstacles and also adversities in our lives so now come to the text this poem has 22 lines there are no separate stanzas here but i have broken it for your easy understanding now start the poem wind comes softly so the poet addresses to the wind he talks to the wind and what does he say he says the says to the wind to come softly come softly means here blow softly so the poet he is here talking to the wind remember this don't break the shutters of the windows so you know when wind blows heavily it causes many things and it breaks many things and what does the poet forbid him to do he says that please don't break the shutters of the window shutters of the window means the protective panels of the windows don't scatter the papers the poet again request the wind not to scatter the papers of his home don't throw down the books on the shelf there are books in the poet's room but the wind is continuously throwing down them so the poet also asks not to do that there look what you did you threw them all down actually here the poet is just uh, addressing the wind like a child as a child ransacks and makes noises the wind is also doing that and the poet is here uh, making a request urges the wind not to do such activities you tore the pages of the books the favorite books are there on the shelf 
it not only has been thrown down but also torn by the gust of wind. You brought rain again. So, there was continuously raining and the wind accompanied also the rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. So, here the poet again says that as if the wind is very much clever of poking fun, poking fun means making fun, making fun of the weaklings, weaklings means the weak. So, the weak persons are generally disturbed and made fun of by the wind. Now, let us go to the meaning of this section. Here the poet is addressing to the wind. As the wind is very powerful, he asks him to be subtle and calm. Then the poet lists out some destructive actions of the wind and forbids him to do such. What are the actions? Breaking window panels, scattering the papers, throwing down the books and tearing the pages, causing the rays rain again. The poet also says that the wind is only trying to be very clever by making fun of the weak ones. So, this is the meaning of these lines. Now, come to the next portion of the poem. Frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling raptors, crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. Look, the word crumbling, how many times are there? Can you count? This seven times. And what does the crumble mean? Crumble means falling apart, breaking. Frail means weak. So, the wind not only does the previous activities like the uh, tearing the pages of the books, throwing down the books or breaking the window panels, but he also does many other ruthless activities. What are the activities? The crumbling houses means the weak houses also fall apart, the doors also fall apart, the raptors, raptor means supporting beams of a roof here. Look at the supporting wooden beams of a roof, these are called raptors. These are also broken down by the wind when it becomes storm. The wood also crumbles, the bodies also break the lives are also destroyed, the hearts are also destroyed. So, here the poet beautifully makes a climax. What is a climax? Climax means the ascending order of importance. You so, you uh, I am very sure that you uh, know climax in movies also, the climax scene. Here the houses, doors, raptors, wood, then from these inanimate objects comes bodies, then lives, then hearts. So, nothing is spared, nothing and no one is spared from the ruthless torture of heartless wind. Uh, now, uh, come to the meaning of these lines. Here the poet speaks about some more heartless actions of the wind. It is so powerful and ruthless that it leads to the breakage of everything, houses, doors, raptors, wood, bodies, lives and hearts. The word crumbling is repeated seven times, I have already told you. To reiterate, reiterate means to lay stress, to give emphasis, the merciless brutality of the wind who spares nothing. He just demolishes both body and mind. The poet also beautifully uses the climax also symbolically to hint at the falling down of the weak ones in the face of problems of life. We will come it later that 
wind is not only about the natural phenomenon it is also symbolizes the problems the obstacles the um, uh, multiple uh, you know uh, adversities of life when the adversity comes the weak minded people the feeble minded people surrender so these doors these uh, hearts or lives also symbolizes weak mentality or weak attitude next line the wind god winnows and crushes them all here the poet addresses the wind as wind god who is wind god a wind god is a god who controls the wind in hindu mythology in hindu belief bayu or pavan anil is a primary hindu deity the lord of the winds and what the wind god does it winnows winnows meaning separate grain from husk by blowing look at this picture look at this picture he is just winnowing and separating the chaff from the grain and crushes them all as we the people we know for separating the grain from the husk similarly the wind also making this easy kind of a action to crush us all crush means grind or pound destroy us all it is as simple as that now get the meaning of this very important line in this line the poet is addressing to the wind as wind god here a comparison is made between wheat and people just like the we we know the wheat to separate the grain from chaff the mighty wind god also separates the strong people from the weak people so when there is a strong wind all the weak and fragile things fall and get crushed while the strong ones bravely survive in reality the people minded people too are liable to break or succumb under pressure so the people minded persons surrender but the brave people the brave mentality who have those continue their fight so now come to the next lines he won't do what you tell him here he means he means here the wind or the wind god he won't do what you tell him so he is not obedient remember the first few lines of the poem the poet repeatedly used don't do this don't do this don't do this but here he clearly accepts the fact that the wind actually didn't listen him so come let's build strong homes from this point the poem becomes very much serious so so means here this conjunction concludes it is a, it comes to a conclusion come here come doesn't is not addressed to the wind it is addressed to us to the general public so what is the remedy when the wind is not listening to us let's build strong homes let us build and construct strong homes here strong home means here the strong home connotes mutual relationship mutual bonding love and affection not physical strong or multi storied buildings can you remember your class 6 poem there is a, there was a beautiful poem this one a house and a, a house a home can you remember a house the poet distinguished two things a house what is a house and what is a home a house is a physical construction only made of limestone or brick but a home is a different matter altogether what is a home it's loving and family and doing for others its brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers it unselfish acts and kindly sharing and loving your loved ones you are always caring so much you know at least uh, 
a, a long array of conjunctions and means mutual mutual respect love affection is there in this home which is absent in house a shankho ghosh shankho ghosh is a very famous poet in bengali so he also evoked the similar idea i aro bindhi bindhi thaki that means in english that let us be united and be together for our empathetic attitude to stand beside others for our family so this this strong homes means this the strong homes let's join the doors firmly the doors not only means the general doors of our houses this means the doors of insecurity the doors of fear so the poet wants us addresses us the public to shut those doors of insecurity and join the doors firmly a wallless house we should wait practice to form the body the physical body needs to be formed up to you know continue the battle against as strong as the wind that means the difficulties the challenges the adversities the risks of life that the wind symbolizes here make the heart steadfast the heart heart means here our mind our mind should also be rigid and firm to continue our battle to continue our never ending impending battle against such strong and mighty enemies as the wind do this this means all these things these things these things and the wind will be friends with us and thus if we do such things there will be no fear against wind that means the adversities in life here i am uh, very tempted to quote uh, famous world famous lines inspiring lines of our kobi guru uh, rubindranath tagore he said in bengali bipade mure rakha karo inahi mor prarthona bipade ami na jeno kori bhoy dukho tape byathito chitte nai ba dile shantona dukhe jeno korite pari joy the english meaning is thus i do not pray so that you may save me from danger instead i entreat you to make me grow unafraid perhaps you might consider not consoling me when i am filled with sorrow let me instead learn to conquer it when faced with pain so what what does the poet mean here the poet means that the battle against the wind that means the adversities the problems of life is inevitable we cannot escape it we cannot avoid this battle but we must fight fight it with courage we must not be afraid so the poet kobi guru says this very clearly long long years ago so uh, let us again understand the meaning here the poet wants us to make friendship with the wind that is the challenges of our lives he further asserts that the wind that means problems will not listen to us they will come anyway so we should be prepared we must build strong homes make our relationship firm and close the doors of insecurity we should also learn to make our body and mind robust enough so that the challenges will be like friends instead of troublesome in life this is very important now come to the last four lines of this poem the wind blows out weak fires weak fires here fire means mentality or attitude the wind the wind is very strong to the weak people the weak mentality 
he makes strong fires roar and flourish but the wind strong wind becomes very weak to the strong mentality people okay so the same wind just destroys the weak fires means the weak attitude the weak minded people but he but he makes strong fires and roar and flourish flourish means grow with grandeur so when adversity comes the strong people become stronger even more they become resolute and determined to continue this battle his friendship is good his friendship means the friendship not only with the wind but also with our challenges in life the obstacles in our life we praise him every day so let us not take in our face away from the adversities of life let face him bravely so this is the uh, poem now uh, take another beautiful lines from none other than shakespeare himself shakespeare in as you like it it is a famous comedy by william shakespeare beautifully sums up this idea sweet are the uses of adversity so adversity is not bad adversity sometimes gives a scope for our self realization for our introspection which like told ugly and venomous adversity might be might look something very ugly like the poisonous toad wears yet a precious jewel in his head that means adversity sometimes gives enormous jewel or grandeur in life and this our life exempt from public haunt find stunts in cheeks books in running brooks sermons in stones and good in everything so adversity sometimes help us to rebuild rebuild our perspective rebuild our vision in life so this is uh, very much relevant in this discussion of this poem so now come to the central idea or the message of the poem wind is both a destroyer and preserver again this famous phrase that means a destroyer and preserver occurred in p b sellis famous poem ode to the west wind it is a world famous poem and you will certainly read it in higher classes the poem the poem inspires us to face the challenges and hardships with courage and firm determination wind is here a symbol of problems and obstacles which are to be dealt without fear we must be friends with this unavoidable wind that is the obstacles to cope with the hard situations in life so we cannot avoid it so why not face it bravely why not face it bravely why why we need to succumb to the adversities let be brave and face those inevitable natural calamities be it adversities be it wind storm or something else now come to the structure of this poem the poet here uses some literary devices or poetic devices what are poetic devices the poetic devices are uh, some things some literary devices by which an author or poet makes the text more interesting here the poet also uses some uh, poetic devices the first one is apostrophe an apostrophe is addressing someone absent dead or non human as if they are present so here uh, the wind is addressed by the poet so it is an example of apostrophe the second one is personification personification is when a natural phenomenon or an inanimate object is personified as a living being here the wind is treated like a person by the words calm you the poet 
treats wind like a person. So, it is personification. Next is symbolism. A symbolism is when a thing means some other deep meanings or things. Here the wind means adversities, the wind symbolizes challenges, hardships or obstacles in our lives. The fourth one is alliteration. Alliteration means repetition of consonant sound in close connection. Look at this word wind, winnows, won't, what. So, the uh, W sound is repeated in these lines. So, it is alliteration. The next one is repetition. Repetition is uh, look at these lines, the crumbling is repeated repeated seven times. So, it is a clear case of repetition and why does the poet repeat? He just repeats uh, this same word again and again to lay emphasis to the ruthlessness of the wind. Next is climax. Climax is an ascending order of importance. In the same line, the houses, doors, raptors and woods are just written one after another. These are all inanimate objects, but after that the poet suddenly comes to bodies, lives and hearts which are more important than the previous ones. So, there is a clearly uh, an ascending order of importance. So, it is a climax. Then is visual imagery. Visual imagery is as if we can visualize the whole scene. Yes, we do in this poem. If any serious reader tries to visualize this, we can see the uh, breaking of the windows, the scattering of papers, the throwing down of the books and the tearing of all the books. We can visualize it as if we were also there with the poet. So, it is a visual imagery. Next is anaphora. Anaphora, what is anaphora? When a same word is repeated at the start of two or more consecutive lines. Look here, in the first, second, third and fourth lines, the don't words, the don't words, the same don't word is repeated and the next three lines, you, the same word is repeated also. So, it is a case of anaphora. Next, come to the rhyme scheme. It is uh, written in free verse. So, there is no rhyme scheme here in this poem. So, that is all. Thank you. I tried to make it easy for you. Hope you like it and if you do, press the like button and subscribe the channel. Thank you again. Take care and bye bye.